Hello everybody. Uh, big day yesterday. Uh, we had the uh, FOMC rate decision. As expected by the market and by most analysts, we had a 25 basis point rate hike from the, uh, from the Federal Reserve. No big surprise there. Um, that being said, ahead of this rate decision, we over the last couple of months have warned against uh, the Fed uh, going to uh, tight monetary conditions. In our view, monetary conditions are too tight to achieve the Fed's uh, 2% inflation target. I will uh, elaborate a little bit on that uh, in this little uh, spot. What we got yesterday was not only a rate hike from the FOMC, but also a promise, or maybe a threat, I should say, of one more rate hike this year uh, and more aggressive balance sheet normalization, I think, than most people had expected. So a quite hawkish uh, statement, quite hawkish signals from the FOMC. And what we also noted, I think, is that Jelen's Yellen's press conference, uh, she clearly downplayed the uh, downside risk on inflation. But let me go through what we think is the uh, real inflationary picture in the, uh, in the US. Uh, to, to do that, we have a, a, a checklist here. First of all, let's look at what any monetarist would do. Let's look at money supply growth. If we look at broad money growth, uh, we have had fairly consistent uh, broad money growth, either if you look at uh, M2 or if you look at, for example, the VGA M4 minus growth, we, uh, we've had fairly strong growth uh, in the last couple of years. At the moment, uh, M2 growth is around 6%. However, uh, we, when we look at that, we should take into consideration that in the case of M2, money velocity continue to decline. In fact, in our view, we think that M2 growth should be around 7% to be consistent with the inflation target, uh, meaning that we are at the moment actually growing M2 growth around 1%, too slow to achieve the 2% inflation target. The same message we're getting from looking at different divisia uh, money supply numbers, same story. So actually, if anything, on the money supply side, we think that the risk is on the downside in terms of the inflation signals. How about looking at nominal demand, aggregate nominal demand in the economy? A way to look at this is look at to private expenditure, uh, private the consumption expenditure. Another way is of course looking at nominal GDP growth. And here again, the story is the same. Nominal GDP and nominal private expenditures are growing around one percentage point too slow to achieve the one percent or the 2% inflation target. So again, downwards on the risk in inflation. How about the labor market or rather nominal wage growth and other indicator of nominal income growth in the US economy? Well, despite a falling unemployment, uh, US nominal wage growth has been quite weak, growing between two, two and a half percent. If anything, we could argue that there is essentially no productivity growth in the US at the moment. Uh, so, if we want to be hawkish, we could say that in terms of nominal demand, it's sideways, or nominal wages is sideways, uh, maybe in our view with a slight downward risk. So how about the dollar? Well, the dollar has been weakening in recent months, but it's also very clear that the dollar has not been moved by monetary factors. The weakening of the dollar rather reflect expectations regarding US fiscal policy, or rather the lack of fiscal expansion than many in the markets were betting on when uh, Trump was elected president. It is now clear that infrastructure investment is not going to happen this year, or maybe not any, any, any time soon. Uh, big tax reforms, well, we might see tax cuts, but clearly given the political situation, that is postponed. That is probably what we're seeing in the dollar. And then again, also declining Political risk in Europe means that the euro has been strengthening in dollar effective terms. That means we're getting a weaker dollar on relative terms. So the dollar, yes, it looked like that might be an expansionary signal in terms of monetary policy, but it's actually mostly telling us something that there isn't any stimulus from fiscal policy. So anything, the dollar is a bit of a question mark. How about inflation expectations? Well, we have two sorts of inflation expectations. First of all, we can go out and observe inflation expectations in the market. 
in the, uh, in the bond market, in the swap market. And what is that telling us? Well, if we look basically on on-time horizons, uh, the tips market in the US is telling us inflation is going to be below the Fed's inflation target, whether we talk one year ahead, two year ahead, five year ahead, or 10 year ahead. Inflation is expected to be below the 2% inflation target. We heard yesterday Janet Yellen downplay uh, inflation expectations. She isn't saying that it's not really telling us where inflation expectations or inflation will be. However, you can't ignore the fact that since we got the rate hike back in March, inflation expectation in the US has declined quite steeply. If we look at survey data, for example, from the New York Fed uh, or from the University of Michigan, again, the picture is the same, rather steep drop in inflation expectation. Inflation expectation, I would say two arrows down here, not good news. Well, so what's the picture here? Well, out of five indicators, Three conclusively argue or point in the direction that monetary policy should actually be eased in the US. And two indicators are question marks. And what did the Fed do yesterday? They hiked and signaled more tightening. In my view, that is a clear monetary policy mistake. So why was that mistake made? Well, I believe the answer is here. The answer lies in what economic model Janet Yellen has in her head. Janet Yellen very much, I am tempted to say, is a 1970s Keynesian. Uh, it seems to be that she thinks that inflation is always and everywhere a labor market phenomenon. She is nearly exclusively focused on what is happening on the unemployment rate. And as the unemployment rate is going down, she thinks that that would be inflationary. However, no other indicators is showing that. Furthermore, if you look at employment growth, the picture is less benign than if you just look at inflation uh, in, in unemployment ratio. So again, Yellen seemed to be in love with a Phillips curve interpretation of the US economy. We believe that is what is causing her to go ahead with rate hikes, which in our view is unwarranted at the present time. So how about the market? Well, the financial markets actually do not believe in Yellen. If we look at market pricing right now, the next rate hike from the Federal Reserve is priced for mid-2018 rather than later in this year. Furthermore, we have seen uh, the yield curve steepen. We have seen inflation expectations coming down. What the market effectively is saying is, well, monetary policy is too tight. And if you do more, you will push inflation even further down. So you will not do more in the end. The question is, when will the Fed realize this? In our view, if the Fed continues down the road, this is likely to further push down inflation, likely to increase the risk of an outright US recession. It's not around the corner right now, but pushing ahead with further rate hikes clearly increases that risk. And what will that mean for the markets? Well, there is obviously a clear risk that this, uh, as, as the risk of a recession increases, the risk of a larger sell-off in the US stock market is also going up. Uh, at the moment, we are seeing some jitters, but it's not dramatic. But I would say, given the present hawkish stance of the Fed, the risk of uh, more market turmoil is increasing. Have a nice day.